Finished restoring a nice locomotive. Well, not restoring, servicing it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This beautiful 646. All done up, ready to roll. Now we need a tender for it. And I grabbed this tender. YNL lines. Looks like it might have a reproduction water scoop. 2046W. I know nothing about it. I bought it at a train show. What I do know about it right now is that it's got a crack in the back. There's a crack in the back. So we're going to fix the crack. We're going to open it up and see what's in here. And um, see what we have to do to fix that crack. steps are all there, I think, yeah, the two steps in the back of there, anyway, let's get this screw out, and I took this one on the other side, this looks like it might have some kind of spots on it. Uh, probably going to wash it and see what happens. Oh, this side has a Phillips screw. tender this thing has been repaired already see this is what you wind up with when you buy your shows and the guy gives you the song and dance about oh you get a tender by itself and look at all the repair work on this uh, live and learn right live and learn in the meantime we've got this nasty crack in the back here it has to be fixed So, uh, this is not going to be a joke considering how this mounts. We're going to have to, see normally I would reinforce the back, but this has to rub up against where it mounts. <clears throat> Over here there's no room. If I put any kind of backing, it won't fit anymore. So I'm going to have to spread the crack, put some JB Weld in there, and then we're going to clamp it closed like this and let it dry. All right. Let's get some JB Weld. Now, if you've never seen it, this is JB Weld. It's a two-part epoxy. These are the smaller tubes. This was... 559. You can get the gigantic tubes for like $15. It says set time is four to six hours, cure time 15 to 24 hours. Absolutely 24 hours for full strength. So you just smear out two equal lines of the stuff and you mix it up. So let's get mixing. Alright, so there's two equal smears. Now we mix them up. It's always good to have a supply of wooden sticks around. I just snip them to the size and thickness that I need. This is supposed to turn like a steel gray. Or thereabouts. Yeah, it's pretty good. I 
going to need to get into that crack. So we're going to use <clears throat> a stick that we split very thin tip so we can get in the crack. Digging it in the crack. When we clamp it, it'll probably smear out a little. And we'll just wipe it off. We'll paint I'm smearing it across the back too. Okay, it's in the crack. And across the back. Not too thick. And the, that uh, mounting bracket goes here. There's not a lot of room. Up here there is a smear up there. You know what? This don't even have to be clamped. This is going to be fine the way it is. You spread that a little bit. You spread it. You get this stuff in there. And then what? Nah, if I clamp it, the crack closes completely. Yeah, I'm going to get a clamp. Yeah, that's a big clamp. But that's all I got. Very gently tightened down on it, and I mean the crack literally disappears. And I'm just gonna put a little bit more in the back. That's about it. Smooth this out. I'm going to hit this with paint anyway. This thing is so banged up. It's amazing. You know, pay attention. We were at the show, you know, a lot of hustle and bustle, and wheeling and dealing, and this poor thing. Look at the back of it. It's like Frankenstein. All the patchwork. All right, well, we have another tender, too. We don't have to use this tender. They got us a little supply of tenders. All right, so the shell is uh, has the epoxy and it's drying. I just put this on a test track. We're gonna see what it does. All right, so it sounds like the air chamber is good, but clearly. It is in dire need of lubrication. All right, this is held on with nuts. You know, you see all sorts of versions of these things. There's very little difference between the basic maintenance of this whistle motor and one of those uh, steam engine motors like I just did before this. The engine that this might get paired up with. The wire is not like quote unquote macaroni, so somebody probably changed the wire at some point. Uh, this might have to be unsorted. Maybe not, let's see. This should pop off now. Oh. She's over here, let's see how much, how much free wire we have. Yeah, this is a little tight. Well, maybe 
get it off. There we go. Get it off. Yeah, look what's in there. Let's pull these brushes out. This is a totally different brush. This one here has a tiny recess that goes into the into the spring. Look at the black gook on that. All right, let's get our friend the lighter fluid. I'm gonna clean that before. I polish it up with the crocus cloth. Remember, we use crocus cloth on armatures. You see how nice that uh, lighter fluid works? Get all this crap off. Those brushes should be replaced. They're probably full of oil, impregnated with oil. You don't need that. Good stuff for cleaning your fingers too. Clean the back of the plate, the brush plate. This is all carbon dust. Now these brushes are much skinnier than the other brushes. So we are really going to have to uh, trim down Q-tip to get in there, but let's work on this first. All right, now we'll get a piece of uh, crocus cloth. Crocus cloth. Polish. Polish this down a little. Breaks the glaze. It gives it a nice toothy surface for the uh, the new brushes to seat. Gets rid of any of those little grooves that are there. Yeah, it's great stuff. Be very careful, you don't get too close to here. You don't want to break the wire connection. That's easy to do, and then the new ones are very difficult to do. These are easy. The new ones have the plastic ridge, and they're just a pain in the neck. All right, that is nice and clean. Now we need to get the stick. Sharp stick. We're going to break it so that we have a nice sharp edge and clean the groove between each section of the armature coil. Make sure there's no crap in there. And as you can see, there is a little bit. Clean that out good. Always with a piece of wood. Nothing else, unless you got something this skinny that's plastic. Soft plastic, but other than that, you don't want to damage anything. Never stick anything metal in here, forget it. Make sure that groove is nice and clean. Okay. Now we have to clean the groove. Again, clean. The surface. See? And the shaft.
old gunk on the shaft and get it off. Okay. Now, we really should lubricate the bottom end of this. But can we get to it? I'm going to see. All right, what I did, I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it, and I was barely able to do it. Too. Look at this, a piece of solder. It's amazing. We pop out of these things. I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it at all, but I was. Now, I'm going to use a strong light. I don't think you're going to be able to see it. But you could, obviously, there's a shaft here, and there's one on the other end. Well, if you get right between the coils and you shine a bright light in there, you'll be able to see where it goes into the bushing. And you use a nice oiler like this, and uh, put a few drops of oil down in there. And, um, yeah, it worked wonders. See that? Look at that. Beautiful. Worked its way down right away. Okay, now we took care of that. The next thing we need to do is get new brushes. Okay, we don't want to lose these springs. So, I'm going to get new brushes. So, the new brush, right there, whistle brushes are very rarely worn, they usually just over soaked with oil, you just pop the spring off, I'm supposed to pop right off, like that, yeah, the spring got a little distorted, I'll have to use the other end of the spring, get rid of this. Take the new brush. Spin on. Okay, you wound up getting a new spring, that spring was too far gone. These things are unbelievable. Look at this, how they get tangled. You can't get them apart sometimes, the new springs. Yeah. Anyway, um, this is the original spring from the other one. And you just magically twist it on, and it should magically go on there without any problems. Yeah, I just did the other one when I had the camera off in two seconds. See, so it's done. Anyway, we're going to pause. All right, I finally got it on. It's a royal pain in the neck, but it's doable. Trust me, it's doable. You got to turn it clockwise, you know, kind of spread the spring. So it pops on that little, that little recess. All right. Now, to get those back in here. Oh, we got to clean inside here. I have to get a Q-tip. Cotton swabber. And cut it down. That it's skinny enough to fit in there. Get some uh, <clears throat> some lighter fluid and just clean the inside of this. The um, I got to get another one. <clears throat> The uh, 
the spring has to float in there. There's the how much it turns. So you want to make sure it's nice and clean. And lighter fluid is the way. Actually, it wasn't that dirty in there because really the <coughs> most of the space is taken up by the spring. But you get the dust from the brush wearing away. It's black coming off. That's it. Of course, we save our stick for when we have to clean the next armature. All right. Now we pop these in carefully. We don't want those to come off. We have to deal with that again. Put the springs in there. Tilt it over. sideways to make sure the brushes are in straight and yes they are in straight and beautiful okay I'll put the nuts back on It's a fiber, phenolic, whatever, um, brush plate, so you don't want to go crazy tightening this thing. Just you know, snug it up. I didn't realize I was getting out of... Should just move the camera, right? Makes more sense. You know, this, this fancy phone that I use here, when you use the front camera, you lose a lot of features. You can't zoom in. <clears throat> anyway, now in here is a wick. So we're going to oil this a few drops in there. That wick is going to soak it up. And some oil in here. This is the end of the wick. Let this drink up some oil. See, there's a little hole there, a little access hole. If you had to put the uh, oil in, and it goes right in and drinks it right up. You don't go crazy. Let's get it both sides. That should do it. No grease on these things, just a couple of places where you want to oil it. The relay was working. You know what? These things are so finicky. I hate to even touch them. What I'll do... Take a piece of paper towel. Put it in there. Hit it with a little shot of the oxid. pressure on it. Very gently pull this through. And you can see the black coming off. Ever so slight pressure. Just enough so you can drag the paper towel through. Yeah, you don't want to mess with these things. They are aggravating. I mean, it was working as it is. So, we want to see you don't mess with success, but we took a lot of dirt off. All right. I 
think it might be time to give this thing a test. Go to our test track. Of course, we got it <clears throat> before we put it in service. Got to oil the wheels and all of that stuff. But right now, we're just worried about the whistle. All right. Let's see what this thing does. Boy, what a difference. Look at that. That's a very good whistle. Very responsive. Nice and loud. There's no air leaks. That's what a little servicing can do. That's loud. Fantastic. So that is how you service a Lionel Whistling Tender. And what number is underneath this thing? 2046? 2046W. Yeah, the rollers are not even that one. It's in good shape. So you know what? While we're at it, why don't we just oil the wheels? You can see they're a little... Hardly want, hardly want to move. A few drops in there, 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 and one on the end. It's the pickup roller. That's uh, a solid wheel. That oil's got so look at the difference. That oil, oil's got to soak in. Yeah, this is going to be a nice tender. It is a nice tender. Maybe we'll get a new shell for it since that shell is all banged up. And the tender frame and whistle is in such great shape. Is this thing moving? Yep. 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 Make sure you get away on the sides of this thing. There. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, there it goes. And always wipe up. Just a little, little bit's gonna get here and there. You wipe it up as best you can. Do a little of this. A little of that. This might be original. Who knows? I know they make reproductions. It looks a little kind of shinyish. All right, so this is this is the what do they call these? The staple end trucks. This is the old stuff. This is the good stuff. Got nice heft. So we got a beautifully working whistling tender that we're going to mate up with our uh, 646 steam engine. You know what? Drop of oil in here. Do good too. This is a wee bit stiff. No oil in there. Yep, very good. These springs are such a pain. I still can't believe this. This one spring's shot already. These are brand new springs. I can't get them apart. Anyway, there you have it. Yeah, what a difference. It's so free now. Okay, now you know how to service a Lionel whistling tender. And again, don't mess with the relay if you don't have to. You can see there's that leaf down there. And like I said, it's just a paper towel with some deoxidant and just very, you put a little bit of pressure on it, just drag it through it. Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. There's a little dust on here. Carbon dust. 
<coughs> excuse me, from the uh, the brush wear, but it really isn't in bad shape. It isn't that dirty? Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, till the next time. So your basic Lionel whistle, the air whistles, the old post-war air whistles. I think they even used these pre-war, I'm not even sure. So what you have is more or less a fan blade that's in this plastic labyrinth. That's exactly what it is, is a labyrinth. There's a whole, you know, there's two chambers actually. Here's one whistle, and here's the other whistle. So you have two tones together when the whistle blows. And of course, this is the motor and your armature. And the bottom of the armature is connected to the fan blade. Uh, you'll see whistles, unfortunately, you will come across whistles where the seam has, for whatever reason, opened up. You get air leaks, air leaks over here. There's a gasket that goes in there. And when you have to take this apart, this an air, this, if you want to take the top off, like the metal ones, I don't know about these, the metal ones, gonna, there's actually metal chambers. And you can actually take the top off. And there's a, this very elaborate gasket that goes in there for when you put it back. I repaired one one time. It's an interesting project. Plastic ones are another story. These are better off just sealing them with glue or silicone or something if they start to have issues with uh, air leakage but that's how they work so it's basically a fan you really can't see it because it's in there it's a little fan and it blows air and you got uh, I don't know what the notes are they're <laughs> actually two specific notes one there and one there two whistles and being air it sounds really nice and when they are in good shape, like this one, you get that good, healthy whistle, like you just heard. Okay, now we'll really wrap it up. Wait, but there's even more. Now, this is the next tender. I bought two of these when I was at the show. This one, fortunately, doesn't have a, a Frankenstein shell. Everything looks to be intact. Anyway, back to this thing. <clears throat> in order to get this brush plate off, uh, this is going to have to be unsoldered. I don't think that can be unraveled from there. It's actually threaded through a hole. The other one, there was enough room. There was enough room. Maybe somebody backed one length of coil out. I don't know. But this is going to be unsoldered. It's going to clean this green stuff with the deoxid too. These move back and forth. So I'm going to clean those up with the deoxid, but uh, this is a case where you got to do a little bit of unsoldering and soldering to get the brush plate off. All right, to add further to this, these were even too tight. The two on the side here, but you know what? These are the original ones, original wise. They're breaking like macaroni. They're literally snapping. All this black stuff is broken, dried up insulation so we're going to get two new wires to the um, pickups in addition to the usual uh, servicing so obviously this comes off easy now and the brushes fell out already and it's going to be the same as the other one same routine the gunk the oiling I think it's the same damn tender, same damn, I know it's the same whistle. Okay. Here's a classic example of what I was talking about. My sister, the wire turns to macaroni. And believe it or not, I'd rather buy a tender like this and rewire it myself. At least I know it's done nice and neatly and properly. But uh, when you buy original stuff, I mean, this is, you know, this is very old. This stuff is, you know. 60 plus years old you gotta expect this this is absolutely to be expected and it is perfectly normal for something of this age and easy to prepare 
All right, I got this back on. I cleaned it. I didn't put the, I didn't put the nuts on yet. I um, did, did this with a wire brush over here, but I'm going to give it a little... You really can't put the oxen on that because you don't want that getting on the brushes. So, uh, unless you take it off and clean it with the oxen and then clean it off with like Freon or something. But no, I didn't clean it with anything but a wire brush. Have a very small wire brush. Anyway, we're going to do the rewiring now. We're just going to change the wires. Very simple. Just route them under there and solder them. And uh, we're going to use uh, 24 gauge stranded. Always stranded. Anytime you have things that have to move, you use stranded wire. You use solid wire, it's going to break. All right. <clears throat> so I cut two new wires. I guess it's 24 gauge stranded and attach them accordingly i'm going to lay it on its side it's a little bit of a not a challenge but it's a little, got to be careful soldering under there you know thread them through properly and now these two get attached together at this point and we're going to attach the field back at this point and it should be all done and so of course we're going to oil the top put the nuts back on and then we're done all right, so we did a little something different to this tender. We added three LED lights in the back. We had three empty holes, so we put three empty. I'm sorry, we put three LEDs in the empty holes. Now we have nice red lights. All right. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank <laughs> you.